Welcome to the Weekly Juice Podcast, where we discuss all things real estate, personal finance, investing, entrepreneurship, and the many ways to achieve financial independence. We interview accomplished investors and entrepreneurs with the goal that their stories inspire you to take control of your financial future. Here to get your creative juices flowing while also documenting their own personal investing journeys are your hosts, Corey Jacobson and Ryan Bevilacqua. Welcome back to the Weekly Juice. As always, it's your boys, Ryan and Corey here with another episode. It's Wednesday. You know the vibes. We're back here. Very excited about the show today. We had on Sarah and Annette from Thanks for Visiting. If you have listened to any short-term rental or Airbnb show on a podcast, you probably come across their show. Thanks for Visiting. It's amazing. They've done about 300 episodes, over 1.6 million downloads. And the show really is to help hosts and aspiring Airbnb investors uh, better their systems and um, tips and tricks along the way and how to just kind of run your business. These ladies were super kind, helpful, impactful, and um, we just had a blast on the show with them. We did. They're in Columbus, Ohio, and they talked about how they have this unique sort of boutique business that they don't really want to like, they're not trying to be like the Airbnb hosts across the country, right? They want to be in their area and serve their guests. And they have, you should really listen to this episode all the way through. They have a number of of these little tips to help maybe become a better co-host, to be a better manager, to pricing tools. Like, how, you know, what do you think, should you buy this property based on the amount of revenue that comes in? So they're talking a lot about how the game is changing in Airbnb and it's becoming easier for hosts that are already succeeding to succeed even more. And it's harder for people to jump into the game blind. So this episode is great. Walks people through maybe how to get started, but also how to scale. And their podcast also does that as well. Yeah, I think um, we talked a lot about the the impact of having exit strategies when you're going to buy a property. And it kind of alluded to quote what Corey said is like, these ladies also look at, hey, can I rent this as a midterm rental if it doesn't work for a, a long um, for a short term? Can I rent this as a long term? And it doesn't work in every market, but in theirs it does. They also talk specifically about scaling down to smaller properties, and and they're not going to take on a big eight eight bedroom property when they like a two ones and two bedrooms because cleaning fees are less and they can cultivate the design a little bit better. They do some very cool things within their property. So if you're interested in Airbnb and short-term rental, this is definitely an episode for you. I'd listen all the way through the end. Um, they just keep giving tips, tricks, and then they talk about their tech stack and everything they have behind the scenes on how they run their business. Um, so without further ado, I think we bring them in. Let's do it. Sarah and Annette, officially welcome to the Weekly Juice Podcast. Corey and I are so excited to have you on the show. As I mentioned pre-recording, we were doing some digging on tips and tricks for short-term rentals, and you guys came across as highly educated and super, I don't know, I love everything about your brand, and we got sucked into the, the vortex. So we're happy to officially meet you and have you on the show. So thanks for coming on. We're incredibly excited. So thank you for having us. Thank you. We're glad you got you went down the content rabbit hole. That's that's what that's we want. The goal. That's the goal. So. Good. It's working. Yeah. I'm a fan now. So it's great. Well, um, one of you two can pick who wants to start, but we'd love to hear your story of how you got into real estate investing, maybe what you did before and then what led you to the path you're on now. Yeah. So I'll go first. This is Sarah. Um, I used the minute I graduated college, I moved to New York City to pursue Broadway. And I did musical theater for 15 years. Um, but my husband had me read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, super cliche, but um, he's like, you need to read this book because we're, you know, we're young and we're New York City, like real estate capital of the world. Like, I think we have an opportunity here. So I read it. I My mindset immediately changed. And long story short, we figured out how to buy a single family home that was attached. It's not a duplex, but just that's what you can picture you get in your mind because it was, you know, we each owned each other the home. But anyway, we bought this home because there was a door leading to the basement. And uh, we we borrowed money from, uh, I think at like 5% from Nick's mom. And we got a 3% FHA loan. And we bought this house because as an actor, a lot of my friends, while they're traveling, doing tours, whatever, get jobs, they need a place to stay when they're in town or they don't want to commit to a lease, right? So I really feel like actors truly invented the short-term rental marketplace. We just didn't know it. We weren't smart enough to be Brian Chesky and start Airbnb. But anyway, that was my thought. I was like, oh, I'll just have my friends live in this basement. They can enter the door on their own. We we 
added a full bath down there, what have you. And of course, it's 2010, 2011, Airbnb came on the scene. And so I went to my husband. I was like, hey, there's this new app that you can have travelers stay with us. We can get so much more per month. Also, fun fact, I worked in hotels between gigs myself. Um, I've been in hospitality since I was 16, worked in restaurants and what have you. And so it just seemed like a perfect fit. I was like, I can really leverage my home with this app. So long story short, we tried Airbnb. We didn't look back. We also leveraged Instagram back in the day before it was like highly used. And we got ourselves somehow on an HGTV show where we flipped the vacation rental. Um, and we learned even more about vacation rentals and how the design of them and all the thought that goes into them, it's very different from a long-term rental or a primary residence, right? Or a flip. So we just became experts in this short term in this short-term rental furnished space at this time. And we we really leveraged it. So in 2017, we decided to leave New York City and we had a spreadsheet of all the markets that we could go to to invest with less red tape because New York City was getting obviously like incredibly competitive to get a deal done. We just didn't have the connection that we needed to, to do that. So we explored other markets like Portland and Denver, and they were just as expensive as New York. And we found Columbus, Ohio. And we love this market because we're not landlocked. It is the capital. So you've got government here. Um, we've got a lot of space between us and Cincinnati and Dayton and Cleveland. And at the time, short-term rentals, didn't have regulations. And so we're like, this is where we're going to go. The minute we move there, though, I'm finding myself in city council meetings fighting for our right to use our properties as we see fit. And that's where I met this one. And I slide in. I slide in a seat right next to her because I had been following her on Instagram. I decided not to slide into the DMs, but just sit next to her at this event because we were fighting for our right to overnight rent our spaces. And um, I was going to start a podcast and I, I've been following Sarah and her husband and um, asked Sarah to be a guest on my show. And that show never, never hit the airwaves because we had a connection on our first podcast. And that's where Thanks for Visiting comes from. But the, the way that I got into short-term rentals is I like to say I got quit from a company um, that I was employee number one, helped build it from one employee to 120. It's going to do around 42 million this year. We sell vintage inspired um, athletic apparel. And so just really helped build an online brand. And, and I'll be honest, like it was time for me to leave. It was time for me to get quit, get quit. I, I took a nice uh, leave. Um, yeah, I'm sure you did I'm sure you did it. But I, truly I was lost. I, I thought that was going to be my, my, just like Sarah thought acting was going to be her deal. I thought that was going to be my deal. And I was like, wait a second, what do I do next? And I had been going into an office, again, a ton of employees. We had retail locations, we had warehouses. So I was like going in every every morning, staying late every night. I was, you know, I was the COO. So at that time, I'm like, what do I do? I don't want to go to an office. I, I want to be my own boss. I no longer like, even though I was had equity in the company, I was still working for the founder. And I was like, I don't want to work for anybody else anymore. How I, I need to figure out to, to do my own thing. And luckily, I had a friend who was a real estate developer. He wanted me to come on his team. And I was like, nope, I'm not doing that anymore. But I was like, let's, why don't we do some Airbnbs? And he's like, absolutely not. My team is focused in what they're doing. But if you want to try it, you know, if you want to, to help me with it and you, but you own it, you know, that's all you're going to do. I, he had a building in downtown Columbus and I was like, who's going to come to downtown Columbus? But it was a great loft apartment. I was like, let's try it. We did one. A couple months later, did we two. A couple months later, we did three. A couple months later, we did four. He now has um, a, a large portfolio of short-term rentals. I mean, he has thousands of uh, long-term rentals, but he's also now diving deep into short-term rentals once um, I introduced him to that. But, you know, that, it was really eye-opening to me that, you could be in um, a secondary market like Columbus, Ohio, and the demand was like unbelievable. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, wait a second, there's something here. Um, and I have hospitality in my my background too. So I was like, and just love people. So I'm like, how can I make this 
more of what I do every day. And truthfully, it was the number one thing that friends, family, and acquaintances asked me about. So that's why I started a podcast. I was like, I, want, I can't go to coffee. Like, I mean, trust me, I want to go to coffee and cocktails every day, but like it wasn't working, like regurgitating the same information. And I was like, wait, if these people have as many questions, I need to serve more. And then that's when I wanted to start the podcast to educate. And um, Sarah and I joined forces. That was um, 2019. We're almost 300 episodes in and we're building our real estate portfolio. I have no longer work with that developer just because I'm working full time with Sarah and us building our portfolio together. And so that's where we're at. And our our just desire to build our portfolio and educate is why we wake up every morning and, you know, get to share our message and, and up level what it means to be a host. Wow. I, I just want to say that you guys are amazing. That's awesome. I love the story of how you met together. And I, I want to give a shout out to the podcast. Thanks for visiting. I, you said 300 episodes. You did. You grazed over one big number. You have 1.6 million downloads, I believe, maybe more at this point. That's unbelievable from podcasters who are in the game. I know it takes showing up every day, right? Every week and just not stopping. But to get to that number is unbelievable and clearly had more than just friends and family that needed tips and tricks. So uh, kudos to you. We've, we're listeners. I told you we, we've been consuming your content for a while now and, and it's unbelievable. I think you guys are great at what you do and we're just happy to have you here. So thanks for sharing your story. I know he's got one, but. Yeah, well, uh, to, to echo Rye, but the, the, one of the interesting things that you both said about Airbnb and one of the reasons, not Airbnb specifically, but short-term rentals, why we kind of fell in love with it is we figured that, we found out that real estate's kind of boring and like the there has to be some sort of passion behind what we're doing. Now, making passive income, passive in air quotes is great. Like, you know, serving tenants, um, you know, providing a high quality product, that sounds great. But the aspect of design and figuring out what people like in each market for me was like the coolest thing. And now we have a pro- we have properties in the Poconos. I have one in Florida and just the differences in the markets and then what people are looking for, what makes them give five stars, what attracts them to come to an area. And then like wh- looking at the reviews come in and being like, they love this place because of X, Y, Z. They look, they named the thing that we put in there that we thought was going to work. It's a, so I'm saying this to kind of ask a question is what is it about Columbus that you felt like you've been able to dive into and create a niche for people that really want to visit there being that it's that secondary market that you spoke of? I mean, we cannot speak highly enough of the Ohio State University. It is yes. just pouring traffic into our town. So any listener, I mean, if you are in any, I mean, I think short-term rentals can be successful anywhere, but like especially if you are in some sort of college town, really dig in. There is a lot of opportunity there. There are new students coming in all the time. There are new professors coming in every time. There are parents coming to visit their children. There is alumni. There is sports. There, That is something I really underestimated the traffic and the power behind the Ohio State University and what it brings to our city. And, you know, we do. We have a huge convention center. We have sporting teams. We have a lot of just commerce here, period. Big brands are here. So um, that was a huge surprise. So especially that Monday through Thursday, I'm not going to lie, that's still a more difficult um, challenge to fill those. But that's where you really want to connect with your guests and see who those business travelers are, who those people might be returning to Columbus for work over and over again, or maybe traveling nurses or people that do have family here. But Columbus, I think... um, the, the amount of people that have ties here is more than you could ever, ever imagine, especially through the university and its size. What do you think about that? Yeah, and that and that relates directly to our investment strategy. We personally like multifamily. We like the smaller homes, the bite-sized homes, um, you know, the two one bedroom, two bedrooms. That's really our sweet spot. Can hosts here who own large properties rock it out? 100%. We manage... Um, single family, and we've got friends who actually only do large uh, single family homes, and they also kill it. So, yeah, it's it's a great market. I mean, Columbus has almost, I think, over two million people. At this point, it's like the sleeper market that people don't consider a bigger city, especially as a New Yorker coming here. I was like, came kicking and screaming, <laughs> but it is it's a great market. New Yorkers have a uh, um, they have a swagger to them, and. Uh, yeah, you don't. You think your city is the best in in the in the world, which I'm not suggesting that it's not. But hey, there's other cities in the United States. I love Philly. It doesn't compare to New York, but I do love Philly. Go ahead. 
Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, so, I got one. I got go one. So it's interesting. We we're we're kind of trying to find our sweet spot too up in the Poconos. We have, I think, around 110 units under management, and they're vary. Like some of them are lakefront, big single families, as you mentioned. Maybe they have like seven bedrooms, and they're badass, big boy cabins, and you're like, okay, this is a big undertaking, but you can do a ton with it. Then we have other ones that it's like maybe a little a group of like five or six bungalows, one, ones and twos right next to each other, kind of similar to what you guys are talking about. And we found that they crank even more because the cleaning fees are so cheap because it's so small and they can bounce for it. So I want to talk about kind of the nuances within your specific niche, like drive, kind of um, like drive, drill down on this and talk about your uh, your strategy here. So I know basically just seeing your marketing and what you guys post in pictures and things, I know you have a technique with design, which is so cool. I, can you talk to maybe some, some of the amenities that you put in the properties or design techniques that you put in to wow your guests? Because I know a lot of people, right? Like it's it's one thing to go book a place for a weekend, like a hotel, but when people book on Airbnb or short-term, just any other short-term rental sites, they want an experience. And for us, we're always like, okay, what's that like Instagramable moment we can provide or just subtle tweak that they're going to remember my place and maybe refer it to a friend or come back. So I know that was a lot, but what uh, what do you guys do kind of behind the scenes to kind of design that your your uh, brand? I, I want to just, I'll let Sarah speak on the design, but I want to say one thing just that's very inclusive to all listeners is the wow factor does not need to be expensive. Okay. I, I want to just make sure that like people understand that it is about an experience, but an experience doesn't mean you have to have this like lights out um, amenity. Of course, that would be awesome, but... Uh, I just want people to understand that if things don't have to have a giant price tag to them in order to achieve that wow factor and that five-star stay. So I I, I want to just have that mindset for everyone. A good example of that is I'm going to go right to a fourplex that tells a story. So the first owner of the of the of this building, like at 18 something, 1890 something, was a woman named Elizabeth. And so, okay, it's a woman own a property owner back in the day. Like that's pretty special. So we decided to brand each of the apartments as a woman in history. So we have the Amelia, the Stevie, the Etta, the Frida. And you would be blown away by the amount of people who just want to be a part of the story. And these places aren't, they're not kitschy in terms of their decor. Like Etta, you know, uh, she's got, it's black and white with some like deep reds in there. And, uh, you know, she's super sexy and, you know, really calm space. And we have Stevie Nicks. And so we've got a few Stevie Nicks photos. It's not too obnoxious, a really bold wallpaper. With some gold, you know, black gold. and gold, like what yeah. Stevie would wear. A little yes. flare, yeah. Again, like we didn't spend anything more than we would have spent anyway, furnishing and, and decorating the place. But just this weekend, we met one of the guests that was leaving with their dog and their dog's name is Stevie because <laughs> of Stevie Nicks. And they couldn't wait to book it to be a part of that story. So it really can be as creative as that all yep. the way to like what Annette said, like lights out design, you hire a designer, you've got some really cool, like, I don't know, beer keg in your shower. I don't know what you want to do, but like, you know what I mean? Like it's endless, but you're right. You're absolutely right that there you will. It's proven. It's, it's driven by data. You will make more money when you have something that people don't experience already in their normal home. Totally. And, and speaking to that, it's like, be authentic to yourself too. You know, I, you know, whatever your thing is or something like, you know, our podcast producer loves Star Wars. If he had a short term rental, it would be decked out somehow in Star Wars. Like be authentic to what you enjoy, what you like, because you will draw in that guest because they will, they will also connect with that. So I also like encourage you not to just be like vanilla and plain and think like, I'm just going to keep it, you know, as, like even killed as possible, like lean it into the things that you think that you like, you know, other people will like. And one thing, Sarah, this is um, one of her claims to fame, something that um, is in all the properties. And this is so basic. Any host could do this today. And this is all the reviews speak about this is a forgot something basket. And it's simply a basket in the bathroom. You, We don't have a front desk like a hotel. If you get it, if you check in late, you forgot your toothbrush, you forgot your contacts lens solution, you forgot your tooth toothpaste, you're getting the theme here. What's that forgot something that like you could just have it there for the guest? Even if they don't use it, they're like, wow, they thought of everything. Like that is a thoughtful guest. If I would have forgotten that, they had my back on it. So I think that's the thing is like having your guests back. If they're like in a, 
If they're going to reach for something, have it there. If there's something they could possibly have forgotten, have it there for them. I love that you, that you said that. What would you like? I just went on a family vacation to Virginia and we typically go to like a beach, but this is more like the hiking and trails and there was like a stream and, but there was a pickleball court there. And this is one of those houses that um, was made for short-term rentals, right? There's, I don't know, eight, nine bedrooms. There's slept 20 something and they had everything. They had sticky notes or not sticky notes, but um, like little written things everywhere. And it's like, nope, don't press that button. Press this one. You know, like just all the things that were already thought of that re- people had come in and done. But the pickleball court, we didn't leave the house. Like we were just, I, I was like, like after leaving, I was like, all right, I got to become a professional pickleballer. Like I'm ready to go. Right. But like those things that you're just thinking, what would you really like? I have a short term rental in Florida. And the, one of the things that wowed me when I decided to buy the place, I was there immediately the day it got listed. So I got lucky, but there's this like huge overgrown, like oasis backyard overlooking a pool now there's a lot of maintenance that goes along with that but when you look at the photo you're like oh we're in like a jungle with a pool it's amazing and then the way to clean that up and then i also think like i i put a um a fire pit but there's a little area i love the golf i'm like it's not that expensive to put a putting green back there that's like one of my next projects i'm not doing it but just something like that that attracts the person that you are that maybe wants to stay in a place that you own so I just want to throw some context in there of some of the things that we thought of. And I think that's awesome. You're right. It doesn't have to be that expensive. Now, putting green might be more expensive than the average thing, but even wallpaper, that design, it's something that I think will really help stand out and drive up those, people, those dollars. It's something people remember too. I, obviously, I love the little touches of like, even, I really like what you said, even if they don't use the forgot me bin, it's, wow, they really did think of everything and it just adds to the thoughtfulness of the whole property. Then they start looking at other things. Like if I see that, I'm like, let me see what else they did here. And you might find something in a drawer, or maybe the wallpaper. You're like, wow, this matches. This aesthetic's kind of nice. Now you just like kind of start talking up the host. It's interesting. You mentioned the Star Wars thing. And we actually originally were looking at a place in Orlando and going through all the short-term rentals down there. They're all Disney themed with, you know, wallpapers, like almost rides inside the house. And I'm like, oh man, this is <laughs> sick. This is like, this is where I want to have a short-term rental. And they a little saturated there. But for me, I love what you're saying is you can take things like that and it doesn't matter the market. You're going to get that experience. You're going to draw people in and they're going to want to buy from you. And like you're hosting them right there. It's not just this bland apartment or a bland cabin, right? It has a little flair to it. And I think that's why people click the button and actually that's not only why they book, but that why they'll come back and you'll get refer- referrals. Um, it, the creativity is really the reason why we love the short-term rental game. And it's it adds a little bit more flair to real estate. But um, I guess my question for you, having said all that is, I know you have all these tips and tricks online. You guys have the podcast. Do you offer any services where you co-host for people? Like for example, say you just mentioned those very cool Airbnbs with like, I don't know, like public public figures. I'm like, dude, I need that. I need some of that in my life. Can someone go hire you guys in a random market or are you strictly in um, Ohio? We are. So- Thanks for visiting our podcast and our online brand really like slapped us in the face in terms of its success. You know, we truly started it because we just we would talk over, uh, uh, you know, a beer at, at happy hour and then we would hop on the mic. We were just consistent with it. And I think some luck happened, too, with COVID happening at the at when we started our podcast, but it took off. And so I also won't lie to you that we manage it for, so I'm a licensed real estate agent, a property manager, strictly for short-term rentals, but we've really kept it at a boutique level because of what we do and thanks for visiting. I care very much about customer service, about brand standards, about um, that whole guest experience and what I do for my owners. And I just, I, I didn't want to grow too fast. I know there's other advice out there in terms of scaling, but for us, being true to our brand and our message is really important. So to answer your question, no, not just anyone would we manage for. Um, we keep, we're very specific in the kind of properties would, that would be a good fit in our portfolio. We're really focused in the Columbus, Ohio, Hawking Hills area and keeping it really small is key right now while we're having a lot of fun over here. At- I think that's a good thing. I, I know you, it almost, I sense a, a slight apprehension in your voice. Like that's a good thing. We've talked to a lot of people recently. I think it was actually... Might have been the uh, the the couple we had on last night for the show, um, and there was they were talking about a specific point where you realize it's not about the money and it's about 
the what you're giving back to people and what you're receiving it's it's kind of like you build a little family kind of thing and you're in your wheelhouse right there's something where they they're like hey we could do 70 flips this year no problem but we're not going to be able to hang out with our kids and we're not going to have any lives outside of wheeling and dealing real estate so i just kind of correlate that to what you said is like we found our our lane and we're sticking in it and we don't want to reach too far out because we're happy and like that's the most important thing so um, it makes people probably want to work with even more because they're not able to just say and this is important um, to know for anybody that's looking for someone to co-host for them or to be their property manager, like it really should be their all in game. You know, like you want that person. Um, we also advise if you can have them local, you know, you need some you need boots on the ground. You need them to know what's going on in your market. Um, you don't have to do that. But we, I mean, you definitely have to have someone boots on the ground. But um, you know, if you're going to have someone help with the property, we really do think that they should be in alignment with you for your long-term goals of not only that property, but your whole entire portfolio. And yeah, what Sarah said, so she she's in, she's in hospitality. So that was her way of saying, no, we don't. And also we we have a membership and that's where we serve, we serve, you know, all of our members there. And that's how we like, we help them co-host, you know, so we help them there. That's the way that we choose to, to channel that. But great question because so many people want to get into the short-term rentals and they don't have the time and they will need a co-host. They will need a manager. And when you find the right one, it is a game changer, game changer for your property. You yeah. your manager. Absolutely. I I love what we've done in the Pocono space. I love what my manager is doing in Florida. They've they're like their, their response time, their attentiveness, the way that they handle uh, things that go wrong. It's been awesome. I'm curious if you have tips or tricks. Well, I know you have tips or tricks, but like maybe you could share three uh, or so uh, that maybe helps you stand out as host or could help somebody in another market that you're not even competing in? What are some things that you think if somebody's either looking to get in the co-hosting space or an owner that's looking to hire a management company, what are some things that you would point out to them? Yeah, I'd like to think that nowadays this, is a, this isn't as much of a like a, like a mind blown situation, but we never let the cleaner be the last professional in our spaces. Between the cleaner and guest arrival, we have our inspectors go in and we've always done that um, because it's not on the cleaner to make sure that your product is ready for the consumer, right? Like that, that's not their job. So for us, that's always helped us with not only quality control, but then our inspectors, they have a last look. We we always write, we're still old school, your handwritten notes. We make sure that every stay is really curated to that person staying within reason. I'm not blowing the budget over here. We also like to make money. Uh, so that's one thing. What's something else that we do? Uh, I, I think just having a long, a long term perspective on everything, because uh, if you're just looking at it day to day or month to month, it can be a real struggle. So to, to, you've, you've got to zoom out and it needs to be data over drama. So, you know, you're going to have those slower months. You're going to have those slower weeks or maybe even a quarter. And so we just really we have a, a longer term strategy. We also have a pivot strategy, which everyone should have with their own asset or if someone's managing it, what is that pivot strategy? Do we have a midterm rental strategy if we need to? Do we have a long-term pivot strategy? So I, that is one thing that when Sarah and I are looking at properties or looking to co-host or, or with anyone, we always wanna have a couple of options. We don't want short-term rentals to be the only one because regulations are around too. So I think just knowing what your pivot strategy is right when you're getting ready to purchase is is a different is a difference maker too because some properties will be a no so i think that's something important to to chat about i think that's two you got another one i got another one again for the professional property manager uh this is like a no brainer of course but the co-host will sometimes forget right like your job as a co-host is to really help your owner or your partner in in, in this make money right so giving them a quarterly uh data share. You know, what was your ADR? What was your occupancy rate? What was the rev part? What were the reviews that came out, both positive and constructive? And what kind of clues are our guests telling us on what we can improve on for that next quarter? So really being a partner with your owner as a co-host and sharing, not just getting the guest in and guest out. Like that's that's bare minimum. And these days, that's not enough. So it, the competition is fierce. And guests have a lot of options out there. So if you've heard about the whole like Airbnb bust situation, like that doesn't have to be your story if you stay on top of your business. And so giving those quarterly reports to your owners, or maybe like you're, you're a partner in it and your investment is management, 
giving that to your those business partners of yours, let them know that you're on top of it and you've got a strategy moving forward is really helpful too. Yeah, I see a lot of conflicting data out there uh, that is uh, threads and Twitter and all that. Like I saw some data that came out. A bunch of people sent it to me because they know that we're in the in the SDR space. It's like, you know, revenues are down in the biggest markets, Phoenix, Austin by 40, 50%. And then I like dug into it a little bit and also waited for somebody else smarter than me to tweet something else uh, because that was like uh, the study done by all the rooms. And then they took air DNA data and they said, well, that's not actually true. It's only down three or 4% in these markets. So I think that there's a big scare, not a scare tactic, but it's out there because there is so much competition. So I'm curious what you've seen in your market 2021 to now, has it come down? Um, because I know in markets that I just started to invest in, it it's lower than it used to be, but still so, so people want to travel there so much that it's not making a huge dent. And I'm like fully booked in the summer in Florida. And I'm like, wow, this is crazy. Versus I know the winter, it'll be fully booked too, but it'll be significantly more uh, per night. So my question is, are you seeing a, a downturn in your market? Do you think that data is real? What, what's, what has it been like for you? I do not agree with that data. And from personal experience, this year overall, our entire portfolio is up 5%. Um, and that's with occupancy being down slightly slightly, which I'm okay with. If I'm going to be up in like revenue and then down in occupancy and I'm still like able to make my owners and myself as an investor happy, I'm here for it. But again, it's because it's not this like this, um, I don't want to say get rich quick strategy, right? But we're in this a long haul. So like our strategies for for this year, we start at the end of 2022. And we're already thinking about our slow, our slow season coming up in 2021 and positioning ourselves and gearing up for, to fill, to fill those gaps. So when it hits you by surprise, you can lose a lot of money when you're like, oh my gosh, like I knew this was a shoulder season, but I wasn't prepared. I wasn't marketing already. I wasn't already preparing for for that change. And so again, you do not have to be a part of this whole like this this narrative that's out right now. And, and, and I also will say to you that you are going to see some short-term rentals hit the market and we have mm-hmm. and bring it on because like our operations are dialed in our, you know, our strategies are dialed in. We have the tech stack. We are ready to pick up those people who invested in 2020, 2021, realize that's a lot of hard work and, 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 and they're not in it for the long haul. Right. So if anyone out there is like, oh my gosh, there's a lot of short term rentals on the market. I think that's a good thing for those of us who really love this industry and we're, we can plug it into our systems and then, and keep, it's an advocate for hiring the right person to run it for you because there's the amount of people that are doing it that have tried to do it themselves that could throw up an old rickety house in 2017 and make a ton of money. You can't do it anymore. So I think it's an advocate for the professionals. Like if you go in there and you see super hosts and they've been super hosts for six years, they're doing something right. Like they really know what they're doing and you're probably going to book with them over potentially somebody who is new getting starting new and, and, Doing it yourself is very difficult these days. It is. I wanted to, you mentioned a couple of things that are super important in the operation side and the tech stack and without giving away all your secrets, but just while we're friends in the room sharing, can you give a little bit of, um, okay, no secrets. So just, I know everybody runs their ship very differently in the back end. There's a lot of PMS systems. There's a lot of like um, hiring VAs to help manage things. Can you talk to kind of the operation of behind the scenes on what you guys do and maybe Quite the quite honestly, the reason I'm asking this is we have a mixed bag of of listeners, right? Some people have their first Airbnb. Some are aspiring to be Airbnb. They're going to get their first short term rental, and then some have 10, 15. They're like, I need to do something better because the market's squeezing on me, and I, I see all these people, super hosts. I haven't quite got there. So, what are you guys doing that's that's helped and worked? I think number one for any listener, whether it's their first short short term rental or they're just getting started, or they do have ten. I mean, we cannot speak enough about using dynamic pricing. It's just, it's always going to be smarter than you. It is an art and a science, but that is something tech stack wise that we would recommend to to anyone. Use use the tool to help you make more money. And so that is something I would say, number one, um, we we use dynamic pricing. We do, we do suggest anybody at any level um, bring that into their tech stack ASAP. You want to talk about PMS? Uh, yeah, so we personally use Hostfully it's not the perfect fit for everyone, right? So, and, and we know that, but for us, I have hacked that software to a point where like, I can never let it go because I, our, my team just knows how to use it inside and out. Um, plus, I, the reason I loved Hostfully in the first place is because they don't try to be 
a, a solution for everything, right? They integrate with the pricing and the the email management and the contract signatures, right? Like, so they're they're just like, hey, let's we were just the networker. We're just connecting all the amazing softwares um, in together. So we use Hostfully. I was also going to say, and again, you know, with the boom of COVID and short term rentals, like the secret really is out, but we're cool with it. Get your guests contact information and not just the person who books the property when you can especially if you manage larger properties those are all people who know someone and who might want to come back and visit or at least refer you out so it's just great business strategy to get the contact information of everyone you get whether it's from an ota or and, otherwise and here's the um i see you guys like chatting but here's what's so cool the text the tech there is actually called stayfi Yep. Um, I, oh, wow, we were going to say it. You beat us okay. to me. That's great. And, and I want to I explain to the listeners, it is just, you know, you don't, this is not a scary thing to like collect email addresses. This isn't a, you know, oh, am I going to get kicked off the platform? No, this is just the same as if you would walk into a coffee shop or any hotel, that splash page that comes up, that you are letting them know you're giving me your email, you know, your email. This is how I could contact you in the future. So it's a very above board um, it's again, anybody that's going to log on to the Wi-Fi, it actually looks super professional. And um, that technology is out there. And I think that's what's so cool for hosts too. Like we can have that same look as a hotel and, and a, a coffee shop. Like what is like, that's amazing um, technology. So stay by there. The last thing I want to say um, as far as technology is a software called Breezeway. And the reason we want to bring this up is what Sarah was saying about having an inspector is Breezeway is actually property care. Um, like it's it's for the care of the property. So not just the management side. So this is something for, for safety. This is, we use the, our cleaning team uses it. So they, you know, they they check in when they get their list of what they're supposed to do that day. We know when they're there, they have a checklist that they follow every single day on the app. And so that is something that I think that there's a lot of tech that you can, but the the one, the four that we just named are are, are things that we, we would always suggest to, to anyone. For sure. Very cool. Yeah. I, I I think we're having like a little bit of a technological, like I can give you a review here too, because it's interesting the position that we're in being on the back end and being on the owner, the owner of the property side, right? Where I don't see the back end of the management and we're on the management side. And the feedback that I that I would say is people that are listening, like what what software do I use? Like what should I use? First of all, Price Labs, you need some sort of pricing tool, 100% without a doubt. But if you, I was comparing, I don't know if you've got, if you use Guesty, and then also host away. I'm I'm not getting paid by either one of these at all, but I found that Guesty on the back end, the management side, I can see all 110 properties is pretty damn good. Like I I've I've really liked the way that is. Host away on the front end, on the owner side, I can't see anything. I'm like frustrated with it. Like I can't even see the nightly rate. I have to check the nightly rate on the Airbnb listing. Now I have the conversations with my property manager. But it's very interesting how it how these platforms show. So for people that are listening, I want to throw that out there. I like Guesty. I think it's worked. We had Hostaway on the back end, which I like too. But the front end's weird. Like I just didn't. I don't really love it. They're all. It, it depends on. I think there's no cookie cutter answer for it. Right. Everyone has a different operation, and you might have X amount of units in one market and X in another, and just it, it's different. We actually it had we had Hostaway. We had Hostaway. We changed because of the merger of a company. That's why. Right. But, but for us, we we loved it. We we're like, oh my god, the back end here is great. The calendar is. I just love the aesthetic of it. And then we changed guests. We're like, this sucks. But then now we love it. So it's just yeah. it's weird. You just evolve to like things over time and change your game. Go ahead. I know you you got one. Oh, this is something like I think getting comfortable with like it's always going to be a love hate relationship with any sort of tech. And so that's the one thing that we encourage hosts. Like we hear people jumping from property management software to PMS to PMS. It's like just some, no, there's, unless you're going to build something custom and I have news for you there, even when you build something custom, it's going to break every day and you're going to wish you did it different. So just settle into the fact of like, choose one. There is no like one size fits all, uh, you know, and, and you guys have that interesting relationship right now where you get to see two of them at the or three of them at the same time. So that makes even more potential friction of like, oh, I wish this did this or I wish this did this. But I just say with with confidence, choose one thing and just learn it and figure it out and, and, and just stick with it. Cause that that constant, that mental mortgage that you're gonna take up of like, 
wondering if you should switch or if there's a better solution. It's just, it's it's really a time and energy stock. Well, it's expensive to end that. Yeah, to, totally. this property management software is it's not a cheap endeavor. It's not, a, it's not a quick endeavor. So I don't mean to make your listeners who are considering one like, oh my God, I need to like mull over this for weeks and weeks. No, just there are top contenders Pick the one that you like looking at. Pick the one that fits in your budget because guest is very expensive. <laughs> so if you've got less than, you know, 10 properties, less than five properties, guest is the, as much as an employee's salary a year. So you've got to really be careful about where you are too, while also considering where you want to be as, you know. Yep, that's a very good point. Totally. Yeah. So what I would recommend is go on YouTube and say like, hey, uh, back end view of ho- host away, back end view of guesty. And, you know, you can obviously go through pricing, whatever's in your budget, but the, literally YouTube university, right? We're all on there. Just the, there's so many walkthroughs on how to use each platform that I think you'll find the one that's right for you. One one thing I want to take a level deeper is uh, stay five. We love, by the way, and we've collected a ton of emails this way. It's just like, you have to enter your email address in order to get the password. It's genius, simple, but genius. Moving from there, what's your tactic, you two? Because we, truthfully, we have a big list right now and we had like just kind of started, we basically put a bow on it right now. Like, okay, what next? So can you maybe talk to your email marketing tactics? Like, how are you marketing towards these people to come back or refer? Because I think that's the next step for us. We're like, we have this list. I'm like, okay, this is exciting. What do we do? But we have no idea what to do with it. So this, what do you do? I'm going to let Sarah, she's going to, she's this, you guys are going to want to take notes right now because she's going to talk about a simple strategy of getting direct bookings and okay, my sickles here. Here. Oh, all right. I mean, it, it don't. So, so here's the deal. That's she's laughing because it, it doesn't, it's not rocket science, but it is consistency. Okay. Now, this, so this is number one. You have got to be consistent with emailing. Um, your list, you don't want to like inundate them, but you don't want to email them once and then they don't hear from you for six or eight months. So consistency is number one, but let them know like just newsletter wise and then that the, the encouragement to come back. And maybe talk frequency too. Like I know consistency, but are you talking once a month, once every two weeks, but yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, my, I would, we do it once a month. So I'll just tell you that right here. And now we do it once a month unless we're running um, for a while there, we were managing a, a um, property that was uh, very popular, very like viral. And so whenever we had a cancellation, like we would get it rebooked right away via our email list. And that was the whole thing, right? We sent our email list first. So it could be a marketing strategy too. If you've got a big Instagram following from your property, you don't have an email list, tell them I'm not sharing my cancellations here. You have to be in my email list to get those first. But I also want to remind people too, when it comes to whether you do it, you know, every two weeks, every month, maybe once a quarter, although I don't think that's enough for people to remember you, is that whole like give, 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 then sell. So sometimes we'll just email people and wish them a happy birthday, right? Or, or hey, how, how, I mean, truly this is more manual. It's hard to automate this part, but we have a lot of people who come for to our hospitals here or there's a lot of veterinarian um, hospitals here. And so we, this is very random, but we do have a lot of people who come here to put down their animal or have major surgery. And so we follow up with them, like how is Fido? <laughs> we truly care. And so that's why in the back end of Postly, like our, our proper management software, we can make notes about our guests that we then leverage Asana, which helps us remember things in the future. And then we leverage our email marketing software, which right now we're using MailChimp to actually reach out to these guests and give, give, give. And then, hey, we have a return 10, just 10% off your next day. And you know what? It's not just for you. If you know anyone coming to Columbus, this is good until, you know, the end of September. So please feel free to share. We would love to welcome your friends and family. Yeah. So just that win back, call it a win back campaign. I'm just offering them what that, like basically the OTA fee would be and making them aware that they can book direct is huge. So with that, that's funny. We we actually work. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of the company. You ever work with Mark from Boosley or heard of him? He's all in with the uh, with um, direct bookings, and so we we've worked with him to set things up. I'm wondering, do you guys have? Uh, I assume the answer is yes, but you have a site that has all your properties on it, so that way you can send them a direct link, so they can book directly versus Airbnb, Verbo, all that. Absolutely. So Annette and I, we teach a lot about. We love real estate. We know it is it is how we choose to build our wealth. We have to remember too that your digital real estate is also incredibly important. So whether or not you plan on being like a co-host or a property manager or own 10 properties, to get your domain URL, even if it links back to an OTA right now, not a big deal, but start getting that domain authority for your property. Treat it like a business. If you opened up an ice cream shop, like, you know what I mean? Like you don't want to let that 
your 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 audience just solely live on Facebook or Instagram. Like it's not a safe way and it's not worth all that time and effort you're putting in to send people something that you don't own. I know it's a sure. very common marketing tip these days, but it's so true. So yes, investing in your digital real estate and having a place for your property to live on a site that you own is a no brainer. And do you, within that, like a second layer, do you have one that covers all the units you manage or you own, or do you have separate for each property? Because it can be a lot. It's an age old question, right? What From Instagram to your website, we are a one and done. So we have one umbrella brand, but then you can still brand all your properties. And you can even in the filter section on your direct booking site, you know, you can filter it by, of course, rooms and location, but you can also create filters for yourself too that that makes sense for your brand as well and have those names there. But for us, one umbrella for, for all of our properties. Very cool. Got it. So one of the questions that I think maybe people that are driving or listening are thinking about, at least I would be, is that's great. All this information is awesome. But what if I don't have any Airbnbs? I don't have any short-term rentals, right? So I'm curious if you agree with this rule, not a rule, but kind of like a uh, sort of a calculation to get you to know if, if a property that you buy is going to be profitable, if it's going to make money. And I've used the 20% rule before. So for example, if you buy a $600,000 property, it needs to bring in $120,000 a year. That's 20% of that in revenue. In order for it to be somewhat profitable, your management and your systems will then dictate whether or not it is. Is that a rule? Is that something that you've thought of? Is there another one that you use maybe for your own portfolios to buy to understand, especially in today's market, if something is going to work or not? 20% rule is great because you can do it like in your car, literally as you're driving for dollars at the stop sign. And is it worth a second look? Because then there's so many other things you can do too to increase the value or to increase the ADR that potentially isn't you know, showing itself to you because of what this house is for sale and whether or not it's currently a short-term rental or you make it a short-term rental, right? What improvements can you make? Just like any other real estate opportunity that comes your way. But a thousand percent, that rule is definitely what we use. Cash on cash is also something that we use. But also for us, like Annette said in the beginning, uh, we're in a metro marketplace. So for us, if something doesn't work as just a short-term, as a midterm, okay, then it's a long-term. And so we have a lot of flexibility, which is also why I like our, our market. And so if you're investing in Pigeon Forge, you may not have that flexibility in terms of, you know, how how you yeah. can pivot on that property. But yeah. Yeah. Right. Candidly, like the property that I purchased in Florida, it will work as a midterm for sure. I'll be, I could still make a little money. It won't work as long term. Like right. I, I would keep it because I, I would still be paying a lot less to own the property than if I had it without a renter in there. And I can afford now with other income coming in to keep it but it wouldn't be fun. So like, and most, I would say, I'm surprised that you're saying that a lot of the properties that you that you have or manage could work as long-term because a lot of Airbnbs don't work that way. And, it, and maybe that's the, a testament to the Columbus market, but you're not going to get that in most. Midterm, you could. Like you can break, even if you break even, maybe for a few years, I don't think it's a bad play in some markets. If you're going to get, if that property that's 500 grand is going to be worth 800 grand in seven years, like, you know, it's maybe, maybe you do break even on a midterm rental or something like that. There's just so many strategies. Like that's why I love this game. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the one thing that, that we all have in common is reselling it. Right. And so if you buy a property that you're like, no, I can save this thing. And like, it's a short-term rental, it can only be a short-term rental. And then you don't save it or like your aspirations are way too high and then you can't sell it. I mean, that's reality for a lot of people too, that you don't want to see yourself. That, that's all of our exit strategies, right? Is to sell it or exchange it. And if you can't do that because it's just not, it wasn't a great short term rental to begin with. I mean, I don't want that to stop anyone from like taking risk, right? And trying it. But I think that's something else to just keep more yeah, yeah. Cool. Very cool. Well, I think um, you guys have offered a wealth of knowledge so far and a lot of people are probably like, wow, I really like these ladies and they're super knowledgeable. I want to learn more. Can you talk about the conference you guys have coming up? Because I know that's right, I believe right around the corner, no? Yes, it is right around the corner. Um, we are super excited. We're hosting our um, second live event. It's TFVCon and it is going to be a short-term rental just conference that is going to rock everyone's world that attends. It's September 24th through 26th in Columbus, Ohio. We want to show off our hometown. We had it in Las Vegas last year, but we want to, we want to bring every, you know, we want to help. Same saying, right? Coffee here. Yeah. And um, we do, we want to make an offer um, to anybody listening that if you're from Columbus, if you're close to Columbus, if you love short-term rentals, please, we invite you to come hang out with us. 
Use the discount code JUICE for $150 off your ticket. Sarah and I would love to um, meet you in person here that you found out about us on the show, but go to tfvcon.com. And again, use the code JUICE for $150 off of any ticket that we have available there. Love it. And then one other offer, if live events are your thing, we do a virtual event. Uh, go to workshopforhosts.com. And that is a workshop with Sarah and I. We go, uh, it's about an hour and a half long and we just teach, we pour in um, a lot of the mistakes that we made that we don't want other hosts to make and, and educate for that hour and a half. So that is on demand. They can watch that at any time. Cool. Oh, couple more questions before we wind down the show or finish it completely. But what is the future of your business? What are you looking to accomplish in the next three to five years? What does that look like for you? It sounds like you're valuing your time and the boutique style and, and making sure that you can give all of that you can to the people that you're already serving. What do you want to do in the next couple of years? Yeah, let's talk about it. When it comes to our investment portfolio, we are super excited to do talk to us in six months too, right? This can always change. But just this morning, we had a really exciting mean, um, really like a legacy project, something that hasn't been done. Uh, it's on a bigger scale. It's outside of downtown Columbus. So obviously continuing to invest in real estate and see that through, but still hone in on originality and small and curated is very important to us when it comes to things visiting. Yeah, and then um, to, to help us grow that portfolio and our mission to educate hosts, uh, we just really, our goal is for Thanks for Visiting to be that short-term rental hub. So if you're at a barbecue or you're at a happy hour or coffee in the morning and someone starts talking short-term rentals, we shouldn't be like, go to Thanks for Visiting. They got all, they'll, they got all the information that you need, all the education that you need. We want to be that one-stop shop for hosts and, and not just the one-stop shop, we want to up level the entire industry. You know, we don't want to be just heads in beds. It's time to professionalize, you know, um, the host. I mean, the guests know, like they're going to sniff out a bad host. We don't want there to be any bad host because we're in this together as short term rental hosts. It's a little bit different with flippers or long term rentals. Like we are literally we've got to link arms because if you have a bad Airbnb or short term rental stay in one city, you're thinking twice to the next one. So that's our goal is to just up level and professionalize the whole industry. Love it. So we're going to ask the last question of the show to to both of you. And I'm curious, being that you have such different backgrounds and you came together on this one common thing, I'm curious to hear what you both have to say. What advice would you give to your younger self? Maybe think about your, I'm assuming you're both not 18 right now. I mean, I don't know for sure, but let's- 19. Dude. Yeah. Okay. Go back to your 18 year old selves. What advice- I, I I love this question, especially to people that didn't like grow up with their parents owning real estate and jump right in or or whatever it is. You you really had other passions and combined to this. So if you if I don't know if your eighteen year old self would listen, but that's kind of beside the point. What would you tell them? You go first. You're good at these questions. Yeah, just to take more risks. Absolutely, take more risks. They're not really risks. They're just lessons, and so that's what I would I would tell her for sure. I, and I'm kind of telling myself that today too. So it's the same. I guess it's the same. <laughs> I, and I'm good at this actually, but I, when you're younger, like you just said, like this actually sparked it is that you, you learn so much the people you surround yourself and you don't have a lot of choice when you're younger of who, who is, who you were surrounded by, whether it's your parental figures, your family, or the people that you're sitting next to in class at school. So if I'm talking to 18 year old Sarah, I would say question everything. Do not just listen to what you're told and take it at face value. Because if I would have done that, it would have been like, don't get credit cards, um, go to college, get a job. And for some people, that's perfect. But for me, you know, no wonder I was like kicking and screaming from from day one because I, I, you know what I mean? I didn't fit into that box. So I would encourage everyone. I don't mean question everyone. I like, don't trust anyone, but just really find what that truth is for you. There's always another way. I think that's really cool. Um well, we were talking about this recently too, is like you're, you're taught a certain thing from kindergarten through through college, right? And, and really it's like the way of the world, right? You get, you're get you trained to be an employee and it's funny, we're all here, right? All entrepreneurs and we, we said, nope, we're not doing that. We still decided, no, that's really not for us. So we carved or paved our own path, which I really love. And you also mentioned something about, your, it, it made me think about something is like, you are contri the people you are surrounded by as you grow up, you it is controlled by an outside force, really, right? Like you're you're in school, you're not really like you you don't really have a choice. You don't know that there's another way out there. And it's funny. I think advice I would give myself if I could go back now is like 
really be able to say no and control who you surround yourself with and defend your time. Because really it's the cliche saying like you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. But I've really seen that in my life. And I and I, I know we all probably have it. It's it's incredible with for us on every Wednesday we surround ourselves by with people that are better than us and more have just done more worldly things and are, are seasoned investors, right? We just naturally climb to their level and then you form partnerships and things. And for you guys, like your conference and meeting each other and just developers and all the stuff that you've already talked about, you've just naturally risen to the occasion, right? Just humans, we adapt to that. And then once you realize what's possible, you're like, I can do that. That person's not smarter than me. And so it's just another life lesson is like, make sure you're conscious of your time and who you're trying to surround yourself with, because it really does play out for what your future is going to look like. So there's so many things I would tell my younger self. I don't even know if I have time to get into them, but I think that was a good one. That was a good one. You can piggyback off mine. Dude. Yeah. Cool. I know. I mean, part of it is like knowing that you're, you, I would say have conversations with as many people as you possibly can have conversations with because you'll never know where you're going to fit in. And then by doing that, you build this armor of, of ability to communicate in any room. And then once you can do that, then you know you can provide value in any of those rooms. And then having that, like, confidence to walk into a place and be like, oh no, I've seen this before. I can, I can relate to this. Here's how this has helped me in my life. And before you know it, you're creating that connection. I, so I don't know if we've answered that on the show before. You, well, we, dude, to, to that point, and this is what it makes me think of, is like, truly, you can have one conversation with the right person at the right time and it will change the trajectory of your life. Truly. It, like, look at that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, it's, it's, that's, um, it's funny because not to bring it back to our conference, but I tell, I always tell people like, Literally, when you when you go to like a conference anywhere, I'm like, you don't have to meet all the people. You need to meet one person or have one idea. And I think that's sometimes we try to look, we try to do all the things and like meet all the people. It's like, no, be one person, one conversation, one idea. And that can be the game changer for sure. Love it. So thanks so much for coming on, Sarah and This has been awesome. Uh, if people want to learn more about you, your story, obviously your conference, like what's the best way for people to get in touch with you is, is Instagram the spot? You can totally slide in our DMs on Instagram where thanks for visiting underscore. If you know the woman who owns thanks for visiting, let us know. Um, and our website's thanks for visiting dot me. Yeah, we're thanks for visiting everywhere. So look yeah. us up on YouTube, podcast, all the places. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we learned a lot. It was just actually a pleasure to share the uh, similar similar experiences, right? We're, we're both doing similar things and uh, different markets, different strategies, but uh, Breath of Fresh Air, this is one of my favorite episodes. So thanks so much for coming on. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for tuning in this week to the Weekly Juice Podcast. If you liked what you heard, please leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, subscribe, and share with friends. The more ratings we get, the more ears we'll get on our show. And in turn, we'll be able to provide you with more high-quality guests. You can also find us on Instagram at Weekly Juice Pod, where we post daily tips and tricks and document our own journey towards financial freedom. Make sure to tune in every Wednesday to get your weekly juice.